Today I would like to demonstrate how I might use my iridescent color tools to create a look for my project. And let's dive straight into it. The first thing to note is I'm color managing in nodes today. As you can see, I've got uh, clip groups and I color manage into DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. And then at the very end of my timeline, downstream of all of my look nodes, I've got a Rec 709 transform. So let's start with the first ingredient for my look today, and that's going to be a tone curve. And I'm using my Filmic Tone Curve DCTL for that. And I'm going to turn on Show Curve. I'm also going to turn on Inverted Curve so that we can see this curve a little bit better. And I'm just going to start dialing in some contrast. And as you can see, we get this really nice Filmic S curve type of contrast. And I'm just going to look at the midtones in my image, like the face and the contrast. And I think around 1.5, 1.6 is where I really like what it does to the contrast in my face, for example. But what I can also see is that the shadows get a little bit too black and we're losing a little bit of de So let's see if we can, as you can see, we can adjust the length of this toe. If we can just increase the length of this toe a little bit, we can also change the angle to flatten it out a little bit more. And that really brings back a lot of these details. And I'm starting to really like what this does. I'm considering even just raising the black point to give us slightly milkier shadows. And that's nice. I think I might want to decrease the toe a little bit so that we still get a nice kind of inky toe here. And this is looking really nice. I think I'm going to raise the black point even a little bit more. And let's move on to the shoulder. Right now, I feel like we're losing a little bit too much of the detail here in the highlights. So I'm going to try to increase the shoulder strength here as well. And maybe the angle to just flatten it out a little bit towards the top. And I think this is starting to look really nice. Maybe we can increase this even more and then just compensate a little bit by bringing the white point up ever so slightly. And I think this is starting to look really nice. This is where we started. This is where we are now. I think it's a really nice filmic contrast. We got a very soft kind of highlight roll off and we got a nice toe as well. So let's just have a look at another couple of images to see how well this travels. And yeah, I think I really like what it does to my image here. The only thing is maybe we can soften out the shoulder a little bit to make sure that we get a little bit softer roll off up here. So maybe I'm going to increase the shoulder angle a little bit. And I think just around there, I'm really happy with what this does to my image here. Let's have a look at another one. And yeah, that looks really good. I really like how this affects the contrast in our image. Um, let's see something darker like this night shot here. Even here, I feel like we still get enough detail in the shadows, but we also get a nice bit of contrast. Um. <clears throat> so let's move on to our second ingredient, and that is going to be split tone. And this is my new split tone. 2 DCTL. This is different from the free split tone DCTL that you might already know. If we just increase the high threshold, for example, you can see we're really dialing in a split tone that gets stronger and stronger towards the whites and then kind of tapers off towards the midtones. And in this case, I think I want something really strong. And I'm going to choose a hue that's more like a, a warm yellow slightly orangey yellow maybe, something like that. And then I'm going to increase the fall off to have this go further down into the midtones. I want it to be almost a little bit too strong. And then I can back off the highlight threshold a little bit. Let's see if we can change the angle here as well. And I like what it does. It's, it's a really warm and friendly kind of look right now. It might be a little bit too much, but we can also use the Lumix slider later on to see if that helps a little bit to make this look a little bit more transparent. So right now I want to focus on the shadows as well, and I'm going to dial in a little bit too much just so we can see what it does. And as you can see, it just really fades out those shadows. And I think right now this is a little bit too cyan 
So I'm going to move this a little bit more towards like a bluish tint, like right there, I think is really nice. And I think I want to increase the fall off. By the way, this tool is designed to preserve your middle gray. So if you have set up your color management correctly and you choose the right transfer curve here, then you should not affect your middle gray no matter what you do. Um, for now, I think I want to back this off ever so slightly and increase the angle a little bit. I think this is quite nice and then I'm just going to bring the threshold down until just about here. And this is a very strong look, but what it also does right now, what I don't like that much is it, it makes it look a little bit milky. We're losing a little bit of contrast. It looks a little bit faded. And right now I'm not sure that I like that. So I can use the Lumix slider here. And if I turn this all the way to the left and I can show you with the overlay as well, you can see that we're compensating for the luminance change. And this is a much more subtle look. And I think it looks really nice. Right now, this is almost too subtle, so I want to increase a little bit. I want to bring back a little bit of that luminance shift so that we get a slight faded milkiness, maybe something around there. And yeah, I really like what that looks like. So let's have a look at another shot like this. This shot, for example. And yeah, I feel like that really makes it look much more cinematic. I like the kind of warmth that we get in the highlights. And here as well, I feel like it adds so much contrast, like color contrast to the image. And I'm really happy with that. So for now, let's move on to our third ingredient. So, so far, this is where we started. This is where we are now, just with the contrast and the split tone. And I think that's really nice. But what I want to do now is sort of design my color palette a little bit more. And the first thing that I would like to do to today is to have a slightly warmer look. And for that, I think I'm going to dial in something like 0.15 for the reds. And that just moves them a little bit more towards yellow and warms them up. But now I feel like the skin tones feel a little bit too yellowish greenish. And I'm going to counterbalance that and try something like minus 0.2. And that was maybe even a little bit too much, maybe 0.15 as well. And this is quite nice. This gives us a really warm, it's subtle, but it gives us a really nice warm color palette. It unifies the skin tones a little bit. You can see the yellow patch here gets really, really nice and warm. And um, another thing that I think I want to do is move the cyans a little bit more towards a primary blue. And I think the greens now look a little bit too yellowish as well. So I might move these a little bit further towards cyan to give us a little bit more contrast against the yellow. And I think this is quite nice. So yeah, let's have a look how this travels to other shots. And especially in a shot like this, I really like how it warms up the image and gives us a very kind of summery feel to it. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to work on my densities a little bit. And what I want to do here today, I think, is I want to have slightly more density in the reds to give them a little bit more weight. And I think I want to use my tetrahedral mode today just because I like the saturation that it adds to the reds as well. Um, but what I'm seeing here is that it flattens out my skin tones. And I think what I want to do is sort of decrease the density in the yellow vector a little bit. And this is my density plus DCTL, which allows you to dial in negative density as well. And that, if we just turn this off and on, you can see we get more contrast in the skin tones and more texture overall. And I really like that. Maybe we want to make it a little bit more subtle. So we can use this weight slider, which basically just at a neutral setting means that the effect is applied to the whole image evenly. And if I move this to the right, it is effect affecting the darker parts of the image more than the lighter parts of the image. And I'm just going to dial this in a little bit so that we get a little bit more definition in the highlights. And then I could also use my weight 
pivot. I'm just going to increase the global density for a second so that you can see what it does. So you can sort of fine tune where that threshold is. And I think just around here, I really like how it affects the skin tones. And I think this is a really nice adjustment. It gives us just more density in the reds. And maybe the yellows are a little bit too bright now, so I'm just going to take some of this out again. But still, I think now it's a very subtle but beautiful adjustment that I'm really happy with. Uh, let's see how this travels to this apple shot, for example. And here I really like the density and the sort of texture and depth that it adds to the apples as well. And the same is true here as well. I feel like it just adds so much. And as you can see, if you look at the gray ramp here, this isn't affecting the gray ramp at all. This is really just affecting the colors. And so my last ingredient for today is my Sat Shaper Plus. And if I turn on the curve, we can see a little bit better what we're doing. And I just want to dial in some vibrancy. So I just want to increase the colorfulness of the image. And then I want to lower my saturation to compress the saturation values and get a little bit more colorfulness in the not so saturated parts of the image so that we get a little bit healthier skin tones maybe while we're really not affecting these saturated colors and I think I really like that now we can have a look if we prefer that in a more additive way and I really don't like what this does to my image right now and the subtractive mode is maybe a little bit too harsh so maybe somewhere in between the spherical and the subtractive is quite nice somewhere here and yeah I think I'm just going to back this off ever so slightly and I think this is my look for today let's go back and turn all of these nodes on and off to see where we started and where we are now and I think this is a really nice look Let's try another image. This is where we started. This is where we are now. And that is all just using my iridescent color DCTLs. And I think this is quite an exciting result. I think that adds a lot to our images here. I really like the character and the cinematic character that it adds to our images. And um, I think I'm really happy with that and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that gave you a better idea of how to use my tools. Uh, feel free to leave me feedback if there's any more questions that you have or any complaints that you have about my process. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.